All right, so I think this is going to be my last run of experiments, and there's a lot of them I'm going to do today. So first off, I made this mold. This is out of mild steel, and uh, what I did basically is I took two chunks of steel, I clamped them together, I drilled in, and I also turned down a pin so that I can get it to go back together the way I want it to. And I can clamp it like that, and I can preheat that, but it's got enough mass to it that I can pour into that and let that cool. It's gonna help get me some slow cooling. This is the tin that I've been using. I've been using tin that I bought that was pure. It's like 99.9% .9 tin. It cost me, I think, $30 for a pound of it. It's quite expensive. But I can get this on eBay. This is 96% tin, and it's about 12 bucks per pound. So almost a third of the price. And uh, so I want to compare the strength of this versus the pure tin and see if this will be adequate. If this is just as strong, then we're good. I have a cheaper source of tin. Then I'm going to use some lead instead of the zinc. That's called, I guess they call it gunmetal ingot. And um, so instead of like the 3% zinc, you use, I think, 2% lead. So it'll be copper and tin and lead. They say it's easier to cast. Maybe it'll give me better working characteristics, and who knows, maybe I'll have a higher tensile strength. And I'm going to anneal one, which means after it cools down initially, I'm going to heat it back up to red hot, and then I'm going to quench it, and that softens copper, uh, makes it more flexible. The other thing is, is I've, I've dried out my green sand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try some with green sand, because that's what I'm going to end up using for the cannon. And uh, I've made it as dry as I possibly can, and we'll see if the grain structure looks better. So let's get to melting some metal. There's my preheated mold, and this is pure gunmetal. In other words, gunmetal with pure tin. Um, I'm working in small quantities, and I had a little problem here. I was able to, I planned to pour both sides of that mold. I poured the first one, and then the rest of the metal froze in the crucible. You can see it's pretty windy, so that stuff cools off very quickly. So I had to remelt it, and in the meantime, I wrapped the preheated mold in ceramic blanket to help keep it hot, and uh, then poured the second one. Even though the mold temperature was quite different on these two pours, the characteristics can, came out very similar. I was very surprised that even though I preheated, I still developed cracks in the metal where the outside froze so quickly that it wasn't even a single solid piece. So I went to using green sand again, obviously. Um, I'm not sure that the, the preheated metal was any better. I'd let the, the green sand dry out a lot, so that's as dry as it can possibly be, and I think that'll keep it from flash freezing so much. So we'll see how it does. So I'm really quite bummed. I, uh, I lost much of the footage of me testing these various samples. Yeah, which is really a shame because there's a lot of work in here. I mean, I've got all these different melts and, and uh, different recipes that I used. The good news is I didn't lose all of it and I do still have the results, so I will explain those to you. And the results are actually quite remarkable. There's a lot of different things I'm testing today and it gets kind of confusing, so let me break it down in an easy to understand chart. I know this is a little confusing, but stick with me. I really learned something here and I think, uh, I think you'll find it interesting. So the first variable is the type of mold used. Was it green sand or was it the metal mold? The second variable is was it annealed or was it not annealed? And I test this on both the pure gun metal and the pewter gun metal, and then also on a lead version of gun metal. I'm going to give you most of the results for the footage I lost. These are sand casted and not annealed. The pure gun metal, I got 30,000 psi. The lead gun metal, I got 27,600. And the pewter gun metal, I got 21,500. 
So things to note with these results, the pure gun metal is significantly stronger than the pewter and also the lead. Another important thing is I used the dry green sand this time. On my previous test with wetter sand, I got 23,500. So the drier sand definitely made a difference. Now let's look at the annealed sand casted testing. This is my standard gun metal with the pure tin and I, uh, I sand casted this. When I sand casted it before it was weak, but this one I annealed. I heated it up to, to glowing good and orange and then quenched it in water. It should affect the grain structure and we'll see if that makes it any stronger. Uh, this is the pewter, pewter gun metal. Uh, and interesting that it's such a different color. I did the exact same thing, turned it down and annealed it. It has that, uh, that interesting copper color on it. Lead-free pewter, which is what I'm using for this, uh, is typically mixed with antimony. Apparently that is what's giving it this interesting color. So we're right at 600, 7, 8, 9, 1,000, 1,100. Interesting. So it did break in the middle of the sample. I'd call that a medium coarseness on the grain structure. Six, seven, eight, nine, thousand, eleven, twelve. Hmm. There you can see it broke right where it should. And a medium grain structure again. So filling in those results, the pure gun metal came to 22,900 and the pewter gun metal came to 20,000. You can see that annealing actually weakens the tensile strength with green sand molding. Now I'm going to give you the results that I really wish I still had the footage for. Uh, it's the pure gun metal melts in the metal mold. Uh, the pure gun metal annealed came to an amazing 55,000 PSI. It held 3,200 PSI on the gauge, and the uh, not annealed held 53,600. I think they basically actually held the same. Uh, they are close enough that that's probably just testing error. Obviously, the metal mold made a tremendous difference, so I decided I would try it with the pewter gun metal and see if it would get strong enough that I could potentially use it. What I found is when I did the metal mold, my tensile strength was much higher. A little curious as to why. So what I did is I used the metal mold again, but this time I did pewter gun metal to see if the tensile strength of that will be much higher. Now, interestingly, when I poured my pewter gun metal, I had some voids in that, uh, in that batch. I poured it the same way, it's possible that, that this formulation is more apt to uh, make voids, and I may not want to use that for my cannon. Uh, this one is, has got a lot of voids in it, even down in the testing area. So I'm kind of debating what to do with that. You know, almost no matter what I do, um, it's not going to be a valid test. All it's going to give me is a minimum, because uh, obviously it, it could be stronger. I think what I'm going to do is anneal this one and just see... You know, who knows? Maybe I'll get a good tensile strength out of it and be very happy. Uh, this one looks to be pretty good, so this one I'm just going to pull on like it is. 600. 7. 8. 9. 1,000. 11. 12. 13. 14. 15, 16, 17. So that was a lot stronger than it was when I did it as green sand. Same metal, same everything, just a different, uh, different mold. Had a void right in the middle of my testing area and it still held 17, I think it was like 1750 PSI. All right, let's get this thing loaded. Now a small number on this one really isn't gonna mean much because I know it's got voids in it and uh, I probably can't trust the results, but a big number, 
like say this one outperforms the one I just did, that would tell me that annealing definitely helps. Six, seven, eight, nine, thousand, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so uh, there's actually, yeah, there might have been a void in that. I'm really surprised that it didn't seem to break on one of the voids in the testing area. See, there were some voids down there that it did not break at. But either way, I think it's safe to say that annealing did not do anything. It did not help. So filling in those last two tests, here is all our results. Notably, you can see that annealing tends to weaken the tensile strength if it does anything at all and pouring into the metal mold made a tremendous difference. I am really surprised how much difference that made. Look at the pure gun metal in green sand, not annealed. It's 30,000 PSI in the sand, 53.6 in the metal. And the pewter gun metal, 21.5 to 30,100. Tremendous difference just pouring it into metal. The way that metal cools, going from a liquid state to a solid, makes all the difference. So I must admit, I don't really know what's going on here. Is the metal mold actually flash freezing the pour because it's got so much thermal mass and conductivity to do that? Or is the preheating allowing it to stay liquid longer? I'm certain of one thing though, there's no way I'm making a mild steel mold to pour a cannon. Here you can see me pouring the sample that ended up testing 53,600 PSI. And here's the other one that tested 55,000 PSI. You can see the mold temperature is very different between the two. So what's that mean for my project? Eh, it means I'm going to have to do something I wanted to avoid. I'm going to have to pour the cannon and then I'm going to have to sacrifice it. Cut it into pieces, take samples from various areas, and check the tensile strength that I get. Because I really have no idea what I'm going to end up with. You know, I've done these, these tests. I know the recipe makes some difference. But I've shown that how that metal cools is everything. And pouring a, a 50 pound brass pour is so different from what I've done thus far. I have no idea what kind of strength I'm going to get. The only way I'm really going to know is to do it. Hopefully I'll have reasonable tensile strengths, uh, and if that's the case, then I'm going to do it again, and we'll go on and make the whole cannon. But before I can even do that, I've got to do some work on my foundry furnace. I've been using this electric one. This is a ceramic kiln that I bought, and I thought this would be a, a cool way to melt metal. It's not worked out like I was hoping. Uh, things as high a temperature as, as this brass and bronze. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, stuff pops and, and it spews stuff out. And the problem is the metal that it spews out is conductive. <clears throat> it gets on the heating elements and it shorts them out. So I keep burning out elements. If it wouldn't burn out elements, this would be great. Because I can just set the temperature and, and go. But this is not working. So I'm going to have to build a new foundry furnace and I'm going to go back to flame. Uh, I'm going to have a propane fired one and I'm going to try to build one that's uh, quite a bit better and more, uh, more resilient than the last one I did. So look out for that video. Once I get that furnace done, we'll go on and do some casting. Thanks for watching.